I'm here today because my husband's been unemployed. He's been laid off twice since last July. And I am working two jobs, and even so, with the costs of, of um, the insurance coverage I'm getting, when he loses his unemployment at the end of January, we're not going to have enough to make it. Um, the government has this money, you know. They have enough money to be able to give unemployment checks to yes, these people. Do. Yes, they do. But they don't want to because they want to. They don't want to tell us the truth about things, and they are just giving us a imagination that, you know, the recession's over and that things are going back to normal and the economy is going back to its normal peak, and it's not, you know. Jobs program. Jobs program. Jobs program. What can I say? I think we all agree that uh, Thanksgiving is coming up and the rest of the country and our uh, congressional representatives will be feasting on turkey and stuffing and yams and cranberry sauce and apple pie and will be starving. And it's time that Congress got their act together and not only reauthorized the extensions for the people uh, who are unemployed and in tears and tears behind us, but also um, voted to pass a bill to give the long-term unemployed, the 99ers, another um, 20 weeks of unemployment. Otherwise, we will literally be in red lines in a few months. Everybody, I'm from TW Local 100. I'm here because union jobs are diminishing all over the country. After 2000, when Cuomo gets in at 2011, it's going to be a full force attack on public sector jobs. They already laid off 800 workers at TW, and when Cuomo gets in, I think it's going to be worse. They're threatening to lay off 6,000 teachers in 2011. This is a nationwide problem. That's why I'm here to support the 99ers, because this is a nationwide problem. We should all get behind this. Thank you. WPA style program to train workers. Right on. Has to come from the, um, the top. The Obama level has to come from Obama. We have to stop exporting our jobs to other countries. I'm sorry. It's so un-American. OK, so what's the wrong in exporting the jobs? Because we're left without any employment here. Almost every job, even attorneys are being fired left and right because an attorney can be hired in another country. They come here, they get their JDs, and then they go back to their countries. And with the use of computers and technology, they've taken away even the jobs of the attorneys. What's that all about? Every job is being outsourced to save money so that the companies just grow richer and we have no jobs. And that's not the American way. We have to get Congress to pass that law that gives the company a tax loophole for exporting jobs abroad. Whoever created that is insane. They don't understand economics. They don't understand. If people don't work, we can't buy their goods and their services. So how stupid can the government be? The problem is the corporation rate. And when we lower, I mean, we're the breadbasket, as it were, of consumerism in the country. And when we lower wages here, we're lowering them around the world. And that's, that's not competitiveness. That's creating more inequality like we have in other countries and like we have here. More poor, pe poor people and more rich people. And that is what is wrong with it, right? We should be seeking to raise wages around the world and not lower them so that billionaires can be billionaires. So would you be in favor of supporting uh, 
uh, uh, tariffs against foreign countries and foreign trade? No. No, no, that's not, no, no. It's a disaster. No, protectionism and all of that, in my view, right, I mean, you know, there's all kinds of ways to, to you know, to, to, to slice up the pie, right? Um, what we have to say, and we have to be the leaders in this country, and we have to say what is a human right, we have to, we have to say what do human beings and what does a civilized society do for its people before we worry about profits? We have seen over, the, I mean, this whole business about the Bush tax cuts, they've had them for eight years. And what have they done? They've the, created the least amount of growth in this economy, right, than, than in any other time. So we want to extend them for what? For more people to be rich. I mean, the bottom line is that we know that we cannot depend on the public sector. The whole last 30 years of this trickle down corporate raider you know this this corporate capitalism that we have uh, predatory capitalism is not working for 98 percent of the people plain and simple it hasn't worked for many many people for for generations in this country and that's that's a disgrace but now it's reaching the middle class and what we have is the meltdown of the middle class and the and, and people need to realize it because if it's not me it's going to be you next and the and your next door neighbor and your next door neighbor and that's the plan we have the greatest inequality in this country that we have had in generations since the Great Depression. And if we don't wake up and say, wait a minute, what kind of a country do I want to have for my children and my grandchildren? Forget about the deficit and all of that. What we have to worry about is where is our money going, right? I mean, we've got all these military contractors that are raping us, raping us, and people filthy rich, filthy rich. And it is not right when we have children starving in the streets. And that's this country. And that's right now. And there's going to be more of it. Yeah, the Fed manipulates U.S. currency. Exactly. Every country in the world is forced to trade in U.S. dollars right. in exchange for a promise to buy U.S. products. I think that you know they want to make, they want to tell us who all of our enemies and all of our problems are, except for the real things. This is a global depression. I happen to listen to a man from India last night give a talk. And while they may ship some jobs away from here to India, Indian workers, are their unemployment is rising and they're shipping those jobs to Thailand. And then they go from Thailand and they go to Honduras where right. the U.S. supported a military coup right. to keep the workers from organizing and raising their wages. We are, they are trying to make us compete and blame workers from all over the world. But these are U.S. companies, U.S. corporations that are doing this. And they take their profits and they put them in offshore accounts. Bloomberg just deposited $70 million in an offshore account. And we're supposed to blame immigrants? We're supposed to blame Chinese workers or Indian workers or anybody else? We got to say, we're not stupid. You just walk blocks from here. For the fourth year in a row, Wall Street has made record profits. Record profits. Record. By their own accounting, they're bragging about they're it. Bragging. They're bragging about it. And, and they have their vaults. They are hoarding money instead of taking that money and investing it in productive jobs and services that we need. Instead of taking the federal budget and creating jobs that we need desperately, they're spending a trillion dollars on a war that we all hate and a war that only enriches the corporations. It's up to us to say the money is there and build a movement to demand it back and we need to do this in alliance and cooperation with workers from every part of the globe that are facing the same situation. Those are just the things they want to tell us to look in the wrong direction. But we workers, we're smarter than that. We can figure it out. Our problem is here, right here, $600 billion to bail out Wall Street. The Congress and Obama said no more bailouts, and they did it again two weeks ago. Well, what about $600 billion for jobs? or a trillion dollars for jobs. National security is a job, a home, health care, and the right to an education. That's national security. So, you know, what, what's, on, what's at stake here basically is we already have over 200,000, about 240,000 New Yorkers who've lost their benefits. That's in New York State. Um, and we are going to have another 200,000 lose their benefits before Christmas if Congress fails to act. So that, that's what's at stake here. And, and 
this is the day that benefits are going to start running out for people. The 30th is going to be the first day that people are not going to get their checks, and that's why we want to keep, even, even as it's a festive season, we want people to remember the true spirit of Christmas, which is remember the needy, remember the least among us, and also peace on earth, because a big place a lot of this money is going is to war. And you know, we know that that's, that's part of the problem. They're not building the economy here, they're blowing it up over there.